What can the new Commission and the new Parliament do to tackle the rising disaffection for both the EU and, and politics in general? The crisis has left many people uh, wounded economically, morally, uh, and many suffering people in the, in the European Union, among the European Union citizens. And to recuperate uh, those is a task that we have to do by solving the problems uh, that have, have been created by the crisis. I think the territory where these people, these anti-Europeans, these radical people, these xenophobic people that they are found in is the territory of the people which are disaffected because of, of the crisis. Do you think then that Britain is an exception? It seems to be on its way out of the crisis with strong economic growth, and yet its Eurosceptic party, UKIP, seems to be in the lead in the British polls. Well, the, the, the British have been, uh, never have been completed in the European Union. As you know, the number of ideas of the European Union, program for the European Union, in the, which they have opted out, uh, are uh, the country which has a record, really. So the, the situation in the UK has been completely different than the other countries. Remember that is the prime minister of the conservative country, which uh, has launched the idea of a referendum to decide if they wanted to leave. I mean, if you, do want, you don't want to leave, you don't put a referendum to, to ask if you want to leave. So it's a very particular case. But uh, in the other cases, uh, the situation is true that we are going to see a lot of uh, extreme rights and of other people but it still will be in the, in the minority. The majority will be people which are aware of the importance of being part of the European Union. Imagine, and that we have to explain, imagine that this crisis would have come when the European Union didn't exist. We have, uh, everybody would have suffered much more. We are in a, in a globalized world in which there are many losers and uh, many winners. But in the European Union, we have already some protection for the dramas that can be uh, attached to the process of globalization because we are already part of ourselves, of a global entity. But we're in Germany today, in Berlin, uh, and we would then have a German Commission president as well as an extremely strong German Chancellor. Do you think this potential imbalances within Europe is something to worry about? Well, I don't think so. I think that uh, the Commission has obligations uh, which is to be the defenders of the treaties. And the uh, member states have not that direct obligation. They have the obligation to run the European Union, the collective uh, uh, meetings and programs which are in the, in the European Union correctly. But the, leader, I mean, the, the capacity to initiative in the European Union is on the part of the Commission. And in principle, there shouldn't be any, any, any difficulty unless the press of the Commission, because he's German, he decided to approve by definition everything that comes from the German government. In that case, it will be a problem. You previously held the role of High Representative. So what are your thoughts on how Cathy Ashton, the current High Representative, and her successor could move forward? Well, I think that uh, for Cathy Astrum, uh, she has been a uh, high representative in a moment in which uh, the most important priority of the European Union was economics. Uh, I hope that we will begin to get out of that dramatic situation that uh, the crisis uh, forces on us. And I think there will be more room to get uh, the European Union working to be an actor in the international arena and not only a, sol a problem solver of our own internal problems. And uh, in that case, the high representative will have more territory, more space to do things which are important for the benefit of the world, but it's also for the benefit of the citizens of the European Union. So you see a change in the focus of the new high representative? I think it's inexorable that uh, the realities of the world do not uh, wait until we resolve all the elements of our crisis, although we are just about to finish. You are here at the Hertie School today, and you've just become the new senior fellow at the Hertie School. The Hertie School, like many other policy schools, strives to bridge the gap between 
academia and the policy making world. How should it go about doing this? How should academics go about having an impact on politics? Well, that's a tradition that in, the, in Europe existed less than it existed in the United States, that the big foundation of big institutions have been doing that for a long period of time. Now, we're beginning to do that. I think it's good that the ideas, not only the intellectual the abstract ideas, but ideas which are related to policies, not to politics, but to policies, I think it's very important to be done in academic places and uh, present openly and uh, in an honest manner to the political people that have to take the decisions. Right? To make policies into politics is uh, we have to do the policy and they have to do the politics. But to have a good communication between the two is fundamental. And in Europe, it has not been so common to have this type of institution. I'm glad that exists, that begin to exist here in Germany, the Hartree School, and uh, I'm very happy to be part of it. And, and finally, as a former foreign minister, as a former secretary general of NATO, and as a former EU high representative, you know better than anyone what is required of professionals working in international relations. Next year, the Hertie School is introducing a new Masters of International Affairs. And as the Hertie School's new senior fellow, you'll be helping to shape this new degree. What is the value of this kind of training? And what do these young practitioners need to learn? Well, I think it's, it's very valuable. And uh, I will go even further. I think it's impossible uh, to be a leader in the world of today without uh, being a leader in the enterprise, uh, in the judiciary or whatever, uh, without having a knowledge of what is going on in the world. We are living in an interdependent world. And it's not enough to know what happens in your own country to help to run the, the business or the problems in your own country. You need to know where the world is going. And uh, for that, to understand the dynamics which are global is very, very important. The dynamics which are multilateral is very, very important. Therefore, I think a, a, a title or a, a program in this, uh, in this direction is fundamental, not only for professional people that will be engaged in foreign policy, but for everybody, lawyers, entrepreneurs, uh, etc. Javier Solana, thank you very much. Thank you.